Every cell in our body contains a copy of our genome, over 20,000 genes, 3 billion letters of DNA. DNA consists of two strands twisted into a double helix and held together by a simple pairing rule. DNA is the instruction manual for how to build life. From animals to plants to humans, it defines us all. And while all humans share over 99% of our DNA with each other, what we don't share is what makes us unique in our own way. DNA already stores our biological information. From eye color to skin tone, it programs our entire bodies. DNA is made of four organic bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, or A, G, C, and T. The specific sequence of these bases into groups of three, known as codons, gives our cells instructions to make each of the proteins in our bodies. But this code can be used for other things too, like secret messages. In 1999, scientists in New York created an alphabet in which each of the 64 possible DNA codons substituted for a specific letter, number, or grammar symbol. They spliced a 22-character message into a long strand of DNA and surrounded it with specific genetic markers. They then hid the DNA over a period in a typewritten letter with only a small smudge to give the location away. They mailed the letter back to themselves. Then they examined the letter, looking for the DNA strand. Once the DNA strand was located, they found the genetic markers. Then they sequenced the DNA and successfully decoded the message. It soon became obvious that DNA cryptography could code for much more than simple text. By translating the ones and zeros of binary code into DNA codons, digital data could be programmed into synthetic DNA, then decoded back into its original form. In 2012, UK scientists encoded 739 kilobytes of computer files into DNA strands, including all 154 Shakespeare sonnets and an excerpt from Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. And four years later, researchers at Microsoft and the University of Washington broke that record. They used binary coding to capture a whopping 200 megabytes of data, including the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and a high-def OK Go music video, all in strings of DNA. As far as storage capacity goes, DNA stands out because of the surprising amount of information it can hold in so little space. The current theoretical limit of DNA's storage capacity is so high that you could fit 100 million HD movies on a pencil eraser. It's even conceivable that one day we could fit all of the information currently on the internet into the space of a shoebox. Also, computers and the magnetic tape and disks that their information is stored on only last for a few decades at most before degrading and becoming unreliable. Meanwhile, DNA has a half-life of 500 years, meaning that's how long it takes for half of its bonds to break. And if left in a cold and dark environment, DNA could potentially last for hundreds of thousands of years. Why should we do it? Why are we even interested in DNA for storing information for, and potentially doing so for a long time? Well, one is it, it's crazy small. I mean, it's just ridiculously small. We have all the components we need to use DNA as a digital information storage medium. It's a molecule that is essentially digital. It's a sequence of letters, A, C, G, and T, just like the information on your computer or you're in your phone. We're never going to get bored of DNA. Because of the healthcare, because it's in every single one of us, because it's going to be the future of personalized medicine, we're always going to have DNA reading machines.
single time they roll out a new biometric security measure, it's bypassed with a really easy technique. to create this fake print using photos. All that's needed to hack iris recognition is this printed out photograph. Now you can imagine how easily a brazen hacker could target biometrics, considering just how many high-res photos are on the internet. And this technology is already everywhere, 